Recently in a mailbag video I showed these Bossman Multimeter HRC fuses which I got from eBay. They were quite affordable at 7 bucks for 2 pieces. Their part number is DMM-44-100. These are 440 milliamp 1 kilovolt rated HRC fuses and if I were to get the same part number from Farnell delivered to Romania it would cost me over $20 for one piece. I find this ridiculously expensive especially for a part that could blow the next minute you install it and there goes $20 out the window. But are we getting the real deal from the Chinese source or maybe these are some fakes that do not perform as well as the original stuff. Well in this video we're going to do some tests on these uh, eBay fuses to try and determine if they come close to the specified ratings of the original fuse. I also have the original fuse that came with my Fluke 85, uh, Fluke 875 multimeter. It looks different but that's not relevant because uh, Bossman changed the, the design of their fuses in uh, recent years so the new ones look like this now. So we're going to start by taking a look at the datasheet of this fuse. They give us some uh, physical dimensions in here so we can compare those with uh, some measurements we take on the fuse itself. So it's supposed to be 10.3 millimeters in diameter at the end and 34.9 in length. Let's check that. So in length we're getting 35. That's pretty close to the 34.9 millimeter they give us in the data sheet. And the diameter of the end cap it's uh, 10. Uh, which is also quite close to the 10.3 millimeter uh, given us in the data sheet. I believe there is some tolerance accepted for these uh, measurements. I think in terms of um, physical dimensions our fuse corresponds to the dimensions given in the data sheet. The data sheet doesn't uh, tell us the weight of the fuse but we can measure that with this uh, scale I have right here and uh, compare within these uh, four that I have. So let's see. The first one it's 6.54 grams. Six point four five. Six point three two. and 6.29. I would say there is uh, quite a variation between these uh, four that I have. Uh, if anyone has a known genuine fuse of the same model and can check the weight of that, uh, please leave the info in the comments section below. I magnified the image shown in the datasheet and uh, in terms of color and finish, the uh, metal part of the fuse from the ones from eBay seem very similar with the one from the datasheet. I will also add a set of high resolution images to the blog post for this video which will be linked in the description below. So if you're interested in a visual comparison it should be helpful to visit my blog post. These fuses will have a nominal DC resistance, they're not zero ohm, but there is no mention of a nominal resistance in the datasheet. So we can't compare that figure, but we're still going to measure it. This one has uh, 0.7 ohms, 0.75 ohms, 0.71 ohms, 0.7 ohms. And across these four fuses, I got between 0 0.7 and 0 0.75 ohm. So once again, if anyone has a known genuine fuse of the same model, Please measure yours and leave the info in the comment section below. At least for me the value was pretty constant across these uh, four units. Our next measurement involves testing the fuse at the full rated current of uh, 440 milliamps, measuring its body temperature as well as the voltage drop occurring on the fuse. So first let's calibrate the power supply for uh, outputting 440 milliamps. 
since we're about to write on the current. So I'm using the Gaussian metro heat to measure the voltage drop across the fuse with the small alligator clips on the ends. I'm using the Fluke 87 to measure the current passing through the fuse through the thick alligator clips. And it, right now it's uh, at its full maximum rating, 440 milliamps. And according to the uh, data sheet, the fuse uh, should be able to handle 100% of its rated current indefinitely. So I left it uh, running more than 10 minutes just to see how the temperature uh, will change. And as we can see, it went just a bit over 6 degree difference between the ambient and the temperature of the fuse. Uh, it never went over 33 degrees Celsius, kind of uh, varies right now, but uh, it's pretty stable. So we're getting uh, 340 millivolts voltage drop on the fuse. Uh, we saw the current is uh, 440 milliamps and the temperature stayed within the rating of the data sheet which is 6 degrees over ambient at the full rated current. So I would say it successfully passed this test. Our next uh, test involves uh, putting a higher current through the fuse and watch how the temperature will rise and um, how fast the fuse will break. So we're starting at 440 milliamps. Let's go up to 500 milliamps. And I'll work my way up in increments of 100 milliamps. This is uh, 600 milliamps. This is 800 milliamps, almost double the rated current. And we're uh, in for, uh, I guess, more than 30 seconds. You can see the temperature of, body, of the body of the fuse is starting to rise and uh, I'm expecting it pretty soon to break. Let's go to 900 milliamps. It's interesting to see that even at one amp, it, continue, it continues to uh, sustain the current and it has not blown yet. Let's go to 1.2 amp. And the uh, resistance of the fuse has gone up. We can see the voltage drop on the fuse has increased significantly. So it's getting close to its breaking point right now. And it's pretty hot also right now at 53 degrees. Let's try to increase the voltage. Okay, and it uh, blew the fuse right now. So I think the fuse performed reasonably well. Uh, I mean, if this fuse was inside the meter, and you were probing something uh, more than the 400 milliamps, which is its uh, full rated current and uh, the current on the meter, it will be able to withstand that current for a limited amount of time without blowing the fuse and without uh, forcing you to spend another 20 bucks to get a new fuse. So that's a good thing. It doesn't blow immediately. It uh, does have, it does give you some time to remove the fault. Our next test involves measuring the time it will take the fuse to blow when there is a higher current, instant higher current going through the fuse. And for this we can use the datasheet graph for comparison. We're going to choose a current of uh, 2 amps, which is this line right here. And it should take approximately 35 milliseconds for the fuse to blow at 2 amps. So I have uh, built a, a simple circuit right here. Uh, the current comes from this power supply through this relay which I can control with a uh, switch. It goes through this uh, 1 ohm resistor that I use for measuring the current because I don't have a current probe. I will be probing the voltage drop on this resistor. So for every 1 amp we should get um, 1 volt uh, drop on this and we can visualize this on the oscilloscope. Then we go through the fluke meter. Just for a test, I have a, a dummy resistor instead of the fuse. And if I trigger the relay, we can see two amps goes through this uh, circuit. 
I didn't want to use the output enable on the power supply for this test because uh, that might not be as sharp as uh, the contacts of a relay and I want a really sharp response when applying the current through the fuse. Just to verify that our setup is uh, working correctly, I'm going to uh, do a test run with one of these uh, cheap glass fuses. This is a 500 milliamp fuse. So let's see how fast this fuse will blow by looking at the oscilloscope. Okay, so we've uh, captured uh, the fuse uh, blowing. We can see the current. Let's see, we have one amp per, div per division. So it didn't even uh, got close to two amps. But anyway, this is not a, a, a very precise measurement because I don't know if that resistor is exactly one ohm. But we can see some interesting behavior in here. And I'm not sure if this is uh, if these uh, drops right here are caused by the relay or maybe uh, the, the contacts of the relay bouncing or maybe it's the wire inside the fuse that uh, starts to melt. Not really sure. But we can uh, see in this case it took approximately uh, three and a half milliseconds for this glass fuse to blow. So let's try the same uh, measurement with uh, one of these HRC fuses. I'm going to try to press the switch as uh, fast and as hard as possible to avoid any uh, bouncing on the contacts. Unfortunately, I think I, we're going to have to uh, repeat this test because I didn't capture enough of, uh, of the event because I think uh, right here the current didn't went back to zero but it continued to pass some current through the fuse. So I need to capture more of the event. Um, so I'm going to try with my last fuse. I only have one fuse remaining. I have reset the scope, so let's trigger for our last fuse. It just looks uh, very strange. It just looks like the the current doesn't uh, return back to zero. I wonder why I'm getting that uh, behavior. Because right here we can see the current was at zero, but on this side it looks like we have half an amp. Unfortunately, I can't give you any uh, good results on this test and I'm out of fuses to perform uh, any other tests. I only had four fuses and they're all blown. But it looks like the bulk of the action happens within uh, 8 or 10 milliseconds. But then the current doesn't go to zero for another, uh, what is this, 5 divisions. For another 25 milliseconds, it looks like the current was constant at half an amp. So I'm not sure what's going on here with my uh, test rig. Maybe you guys can give me some ideas. But... Uh, I'm afraid the most important test in this uh, analysis is not concluded enough. For my last test, I will open one of these fuses and uh, check what kind of filling material they've used inside. Normally in a genuine fuse you will find the powdered quartz which acts as an arc extinguishing agent. However, cheap or counterfeit fuses might be empty inside. The thickness of the insulation tube also matters because a counterfeit fuse might use a thinner material which might rupture under high pressure, thus failing to contain the discharge. So let's open one of these up and do some measurements. So I had to use the Dremel because the end is very tightly crimped on the body and I couldn't take it off. Quite an interesting uh, construction inside.
and it's definitely filled with something not sure what it's kind of yellowish in color let's try to take it out So the thickness of the tube is about 1.2 millimeters and uh, this is what I found inside the fuse. Now I'm not an expert on these kind of things so I'm not really sure what kind of uh, sand this is, if this is uh, uh, quartz crystal or not, I'm not sure but it was definitely filled with this thing. Then it had this, uh, how would you call this? I think this was suspending the wire in the middle of the tube. So I think the wire went right through the middle of this uh, piece. And it wasn't yellow as I was thinking, just the ends were yellow. And it was probably some kind of glue added to the end of the fuse. But inside the sand was uh, white. Unfortunately, I do not have enough info from this test to say that the fuses are genuine or not. I should have configured my scope to capture something like 100 milliseconds and maybe that would have gave us more info. But with what I have so far, I don't like the fact that half an amp was still flowing through the fuse after 25 milliseconds have passed. I have another set of these fuses on order and they should arrive in uh, one or two weeks and I will repeat the test on those. Until then I can say that the construction of the fuse seems okay mechanically. It would help if anyone has a known genuine fuse so we can compare it to. We saw the fuse was uh, filled with uh, some uh, powdered uh, material but whether or not this is quartz we don't know. The end caps were crimped very tightly, I don't see those ever getting loose and the insulation tube itself has some good thickness in the walls. In the end of this video I would like to recommend another YouTube channel by uh, the name of Joe Smith. He posts interesting uh, videos mainly on test equipment. He has done some fuse testing himself on uh, fake SIBA fuses and I pretty much followed his test procedure in my video with small ad adaptations to make it work with what equipment I have. So there will be a link to his channel in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video and I will see you next time.